Well, hello everybody. It's been uh, quite a long time since I posted a video about the electric Suzuki Sidekick. So I thought I would uh, post a little uh, one year update. It's actually been a little over a year, about 13 months that I've had it running on electricity alone. And I just thought I would provide everybody uh, a few comments and a, a little bit of info about how it's been going. So I uh, hope you enjoy and we'll get right to it. So we'll start with a quick walk around in case you haven't watched my other videos. Uh, if you haven't, I encourage that you do. Um, but this is a 97 Suzuki Sidekick four-wheel drive, four-door. Uh, it was with a sport model that has all the extra plastic cladding on the sides. Um, and about, uh, well, I started the project several years ago, but uh, about 13 months ago, I finished converting it uh, to electric. It's an AC drive system. The uh, NetGain Hyper 9 system, uh, and I'm, I'm running it at about 120 volts. Um, and like I said, it's been running for about a year now, and so I just wanted to share with you some uh, good, bad, and, and kind of interesting things that I've found uh, running it for that long. Uh, we'll start with the bad, maybe, and, and I won't say that any of this is terribly bad, but um, the first thing I learned was that. Uh, at least with the components that I'm using, uh, the 12-volt battery is actually very important, which uh, turns out to be kind of funny because m most people say that the most important part of your EV conversion project is your high-voltage battery system, and I do agree, but uh, my high-voltage battery system, which are uh, used Chevy Volt batteries, have actually performed beautifully. Um, and I'll get to that in just a few minutes, but. For starters, we're gonna go ahead and raise the hood here. Um, you can see right over there in the corner, hang on just a second, so apologize for the odd camera angle. So this is my 12 volt battery. What I did was I replaced uh, the big heavy starting battery that, that was in this vehicle with a smaller uh, absorb glass mat AGM 12 volt battery. Um, the first one I bought was off Amazon. It was basically just a little motorcycle battery. And um, it worked okay for a while, but the problem I ran into was it deep cycled a couple of times. Uh, the, start, the first couple of times was because the, uh, the passenger door didn't get shut all the way and the dome light stayed on. And that little battery was not tolerant of that, uh, and that damaged it right away. Uh, then what started happening is over the winter, I couldn't leave this for more than three or four days before that battery would go flat. And I started chasing down parasitic loads and found that this component right here, which is my DC to DC converter, this is a Thunderstruck Motors uh, kind of in-house design. Uh, that was actually pulling a small parasitic load on that, that battery. And uh, if the battery had been in good condition, it should have lasted several weeks before it went flat. But because that battery was so uh, damaged that it, it would only last a few days. So what I ended up having to do, and it's a little hard to see in here, but um, I ended up having to wire in a relay that uh, disconnects the DC to DC converter from the 12 volt system when the key is not on. So that, that relay is tied to the key switch and uh, basically isolates the 12 volt system from the DC to DC converter when everything is shut down. Uh, and that solved that problem. And then I went and, and ordered another one of these little AGM batteries from Amazon. This one, this one was only $45, they're pretty inexpensive. Um, and so far it's been doing just fine. So solve that problem that way. Um, another sort of maybe bad thing, if you want to call it that, and I was warned of this uh, by Thunderstruck Motors when they sold me the, uh, the uh, Hyper 9 system, but you can see the controller back here. Uh, and you can see how small this controller is, uh, and that's a great thing. But the bad news is, I think partially because it's so small, it doesn't dissipate heat very well. Uh, it's a little tough to see here, but uh, there's a, basically a solid aluminum plate that it's mounted on. Uh, and then you can purchase, they, they actually required me to purchase one of two things, uh, either a finned cooling plate, uh, air-cooled, or a, uh, a water cooling plate. And I'm just gonna try to show you back here. I ended up purchasing the air cooling plate and then uh, knowing that I might be taking a risk, I mounted it right up against the firewall here because 
it was just so convenient to the motor. It's so close to the motor and um, it was a great location just for the layout of everything I did in this vehicle. But the bad news is it doesn't get a lot of airflow up there. And um, what I found was that uh, with ambient temperatures over about 90 or 95 Fahrenheit, uh, it was starting to approach the, the high limits of the temperature range for that uh, controller. I never, I never have actually seen it start derating itself due to temperature, but it was getting closer than I liked. So what I did was simply added this uh, cheap uh, boat bilge fan right here and a little bit of dryer duct pointed back there at that, uh, at that uh, heat sink. And this thing doesn't do a great deal of help, but I think it's helping enough. Um, and the nice thing about this controller is it has a, a discrete output for uh, starting and stopping either a water pump or a fan for cooling based on its temperature. So I was able to program that. Uh, so this is all completely automated and this, this bilge fan only comes on when the uh, controller temperature gets to, a, to the preset point, which I think I've got it set at uh, 50 degrees C right now. And it's good up to, uh, I think, 85 degrees C. So uh, there's quite a bit of freeboard there. Uh, this fan never runs in cool weather below about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but it'll run pretty quickly. You know, it, it, it'll come on pretty quickly if you're running in hot weather. Um, what else that... Uh, that maybe was a little bit disappointing. Of course, I've had a, I've done a whole other video about range. Um, so if you're if you're interested in hearing about the range and, and the fact that it it didn't quite achieve what I'd hoped, uh, then I encourage you to watch that video. Uh, I think since I did that video, I have had it on a couple of uh, 20 mile trips. One of which I did do a data log on and found that uh, after 20 miles, I had about 46% uh, of the battery capacity left, and that was in good warm weather. Um, so that was pretty encouraging. That, that basically uh, confirms my 30, 35 mile uh, range estimate. Uh, so that, that's about where it's at. You know, it's, it's nothing, uh, nothing like a, an OEM EV these days that are getting multi hundreds of miles range, but uh, it's certainly enough because here in this little valley I live in, uh, pretty much anywhere you want to go is within about 10 miles one way. So. Um, and just to think, think if there are any other negatives, uh, nothing too major. Um, now let's talk about some kind of just things I've learned or, or neutral things. Um, for one thing, uh, everything that you hear about uh, the seasonal nature or the, the temperature relation of range to EV uh, for EVs is, is absolutely true. Um, this little guy, of course, it has no temperature control on the batteries because uh, although these big uh, uh, Chevy Volt packs have cooling channels in them, uh, I certainly didn't want to add that kind of complexity and weight to my system. So they're just uh, running at whatever temperature that they, that they start at from ambient. Uh, luckily, I do keep it in a garage, so that helps some. Uh, but I found that uh, in the wintertime, I'm seeing probably a 35%, if not 40% range reduction. Uh, and a little bit that, of that might have to do with running the electric heater that I installed, but the vast majority of that, uh, I think, just has to do with the fact that the batteries are so much less efficient when they're cold. Um, so uh, the other things that have, have gone uh, a little bit surprising or interesting, um, the, the throttle response is different than what I expected. Um, when, the driving experience that everyone talks about with electric vehicles is uh, immediate torque at the at zero RPM and it throws your head back into the seat uh, and this little vehicle is capable of that in low range uh, but if you if you've watched my other videos you know that I eliminated the transmission uh, so it really only has two speeds and that's due to the transfer case it has low range and high range and in high range frankly uh, this motor off the off of zero RPM is really not anything to write home about um, I can go to full throttle at zero RPM and it takes off okay uh, and certainly can get into traffic, but it's, it's not going to chirp the tires or anything like that. Um, now, the interesting thing is that once it gets up to about 25 miles per hour, uh, if I give it a, a, a big foot full of throttle, um, then it feels far faster than it ever was before. And I think it's because the electric motor doesn't lose its torque. Uh, until it hits, I think this one is about 3,300 RPM. Uh, so it's just 
you know, it's, it's got all the torque at a continuous, um, on a continuous curve as speed increases. So, you know, doing from like 25 to 50 miles per hour is very spirited. Uh, so it's really the opposite of what I had always heard about electric vehicles. Uh, this one seems to be uh, quicker uh, once you're up to speed uh, in that, that mid-range than it is at the bottom end. Um, so let's talk about positives. Let's talk about uh, kind of pleasant surprises or things that, that have been really great about it. And I think the, the first one, and this was the real goal with this project, and this is the, the biggest one, is the fact that uh, this little vehicle has never, not once, uh, left me on the side of the road for any reason. Uh, every time I've taken it out, it's always come home uh, with no issues. And that's been the real, the real nice thing because I wanted a little uh, inexpensive four-wheel drive that was reliable. And because my, my daughters are going to drive this for high school and I don't want to have to be worrying about the engine uh, breaking down on them all the time. And this system has been 100% reliable. Uh, that's been that's been the greatest thing about it. Uh, besides that, um, the batteries, those Chevy Volt, uh, used Chevy Volt batteries. Um, you know, everyone has their opinion on battery management systems. Uh, I decided to start simple and see how things go before I spent a lot of money and effort putting in a complicated battery management system on this rig. And I'm here to tell you that so far, uh, these little Chevy Volt batteries have stayed 100% balanced with no BMS whatsoever. Um, and I'm, I'm saying that based on testing every sixth cell. I don't have a tap to every cell. I have, uh, basically I'll show you here under the hood. Um, I set up what I call the uh, battery monitoring station. So I have a tap, uh, a, a wire connected to every sixth cell because each bank uh, is 30 cells and then there's four of those in parallel. Uh, so I can, I can set my, or just simply put my voltmeter on each, uh, every sixth cell and every time I've ever tested it, they're all within a tenth of a volt uh, at six cells. So we're talking, you know, a tenth of a volt out of 24. Uh, so that's, you know, for my purposes, that's plenty, plenty well balanced. Now, to be fair, uh, I only charge this thing up to about one and a half volts shy of full 100% capacity, and I've never run it below about 40% uh, uh, on the low end. So uh, I'm really, you know, running it in that mid range that lithium ion batteries really like. Um, but by doing so, uh, I've completely avoided the need for a BMS, uh, at least in my opinion. Um, Another great thing about it is, uh, you know, I retained four-wheel drive, uh, and so this little rig spent a whole winter driving around on ice and snow, uh, and in a few cases, fairly deep snow, and it's just a champ. Uh, and that's mostly due to the design of the vehicle uh, and the weight distribution, but uh, it, it really did well in the snow. Um, another pleasant surprise is that uh, even driving through some relatively wet conditions, I've never had any problems with water intrusion into any of the electrical system. And uh, if you look under the hood at, at my amateur wiring job, you can see that I, I did not put, spend a huge amount of effort trying to water seal and waterproof everything. But, uh, you know, very little water actually intrudes under the hood. And uh, at the back end, there's one battery module where the, uh, underneath where the uh, fuel tank was. Uh, and there I, uh, I did use some silicone and seal uh, all those battery terminals and those those uh, monitoring taps uh, with silicone. And also I sprayed the top of each battery where all the open, uh, these, these Chevy Volt batteries underneath this plastic cover here have uh, basically aluminum fins where they're, they're uh, brazed together uh, for each cell. And I sprayed all that with a rubberizing paint, like a, a black thick rubber paint uh, just to help prevent, in case any moisture got in there, prevent shorts there. But uh, have not had any moisture problems anywhere in the system. So that's been really nice. Um, let's see. Uh, also, just out of, uh, this is not really a positive or a negative, but just so you can see, I did finally get a bumper built uh, and installed here. This is simply just a, a piece of steel plate. Uh, and I also purchased one of the uh, universal uh, tow bars. And the, so you can see the tow bar brackets on there. Uh, I have used it uh, only to get this vehicle transported a longer distance than it, than the range would allow. I towed it behind my pickup, uh, and it works just great. 
but uh, the other purpose that I put the tow bar on, which was rescue, has, has never been uh, necessary because it's always gotten me home uh, just fine. So uh, there's probably a few other things I'm forgetting, but uh, this video is getting long enough now, so I think I'll just uh, let you get one last good look at it and call it a day. Uh, if you have questions about the, you know, the long-term viability of driving a, an EV like this, uh, just let me know. Um, I guess one more thing I'll mention is that I do drive it generally three to four times a week. Uh, and as I've mentioned many times, it's always short trips. Uh, I just don't, don't have anywhere real long distance to go in this little valley. It wasn't designed to do anything farther than that. Uh, and it's just worked super well for that. Uh, I really have no complaints. Uh, my oldest daughter is about to get her driver's license, so uh, she'll kind of be taking over as driver of this thing in a few months, and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. But so far, I'm super happy. Uh, glad I made the conversion, and uh, hope uh, this is informational for everybody. Thanks a lot.